The 2020 NASCAR Pinty Series has reached the midway point. Today, Canada's best short track racers are set to do battle in round four of the Pinty's Fan Cave Challenge. So far, the Fan Cave Challenge Summer Series has produced three exciting races and two different winners. Dumoulin muscled his way to victory in race number one while Hathaway dominated at race number two in Sunset. Then it was another dominating performance for Hathaway who took the checkers at our first outing here at Flamborough. The True North Strong and Fast is in high gear as we return to Flamborough Speedway for race number four. This is round four of six of the NASCAR PT Series Fan Cave Challenge. From Flamborough Speedway in Millgrove, Ontario, this is the Party Casino 125. Hello and welcome. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me in the booth is Adam Ross and Todd Lewis is trackside. And Adam, if race number three taught us anything about Flamborough Speedway is that this place is tough to pass on. You know, the series had never run here before race three of this season, but even though we hadn't seen the cars on the track, we knew this is a tight track. It's a narrow racing group. You really have to pick and choose your opportunities to make a move. Yeah, it's been called a blue collar track because it is so dirty and gritty to get past somebody. But as we take a look at the WeatherTech point standings, again, we have to remember it's just a short six race season in 2020 you really have to get things done early in the season and try and continue that momentum. Dave, with two wins, Jason Hathaway and the EHR team leads Kevin Lacroix by 14 points. But let's not forget the Castrol car. DJ Kennington is right there as well with Brett Taylor and LP Dumoulin. And DJ Kennington will start on the E3 spark plugs pole. Well, Hathaway will have to do a little bit of work, not too, too much. He'll start fourth. No one, it's luck of the draw, Dave, how they line up these races, but the top five starters are also five of the fastest cars we've seen in Kennington, Lacroix, Taylor, Hathaway, and Dumoulin. Todd's trackside with a little more. Last time out at Flamborough Speedway, it was an impressive drive by Alex Tagliani in the 18. It was his first drive of the season. Drove all the way from 10th on the grid up to 4th, just missing out on a podium position. Alex told me they've made a few small changes to the car, hoping for a little better entry into the corner, a little better bite off. They're hoping for big results here in race number 4. Just ahead of Alex on the starting grid, starting 7th, the 28th of Kenny Forth. He's been absent from the series for five years. He was just hoping to hang around, maybe be hang on to the lead lap in the opener here at Flamborough Speedway, but he had an impressive run. He'll start seventh, a former full-time cast car series runner. It's great to have him back here at Flamborough. When we return to Flamborough Speedway, we'll get the green flag for the Party Casino 125. The Party Casino 125 from Flamborough Speedway is brought to you by Pinty's, making great food fun. By Leland Industries, a proud Canadian fastener company. By PartyCasino.fun. And by WeatherTech, the ultimate interior protection for your vehicle. A little bit breezy out here, Dave, but the cars have fired. NASCAR officials doing the walk down the line to make sure everybody is ready to roll and we will set them loose for another 125 laps. The track looks fantastic. The track does. Once again, we'll remind you, no fans in the stands, so a little different view when you see the drone footage from overhead, but the drivers giving the thumbs up. They're prepared to go for a 125-lap sprint race at this third of a mile Flamborough Speedway. We'll take a look at your quick wick starting lineup in just a little bit, but have a look at some of these cameras we'll be featuring today, including this 360 cam, a great view. Yeah, 360 degrees of DJ Kennington. That's been a really cool shot. Kennington will roll off on pole. Alongside him, Kevin Lacroix in the 74. Row number two is where we find Brett Taylor in the 33 and Jason Hathaway in the three. Starting fifth is going to be L.P. Dumoulin in the 47, fellow Quebecer Donald Teague in the 80. In row four, Kenny Fourth in the 28, and the 24 is J.R. Fitzpatrick. 
Look back to row number five, and that's where we find Alex Tagliani back behind the wheel of the 18. Connor James, the rookie in the eight, looking for another top five finish. Dexter Stacy's in the 92, and Larry Jackson in the 98. That's row number six. Drivers scrubbing their tires, trying to get some heat of them. We ride with DJ Kennington. Let's look at the E3 Spark Flux race analysis, Dave. Yeah, as we mentioned, it's a sprint race, 125 laps. It is a beautiful day, albeit a little windy today, but 23 degrees, perfect day for racing. Great day for these drivers inside the cars, not stifling hot. It might get that way in just a few minutes, though. Driver starting mid-pack here today is J.R. Fitzpatrick. He has 90 Pinty Series starts, 11 wins. And he's got 30 starts in the NASCAR trucks in the Xfinity Series. Former CASCAR champion, Oscar champion, APC champion. He's got the alphabet covered. <laughs> he sure does. And he's got a lot of championships to hang out as well. But he wants a win here in the NASCAR Pinty Series here today. They're lighted up two by two as we get set to go green. The Party Casino 125 is underway. and Lacroix got on the throttle quick. The memo didn't get sent out to row number two as Jason Hathaway, all sorts of sideways coming off turn four. But Lacroix has done something that no one did in race number three, and that is start from the outside and take the lead. He just hammered on the horsepower. You know, on cold tires, he could go down in the corner with a little more confidence up the bank in Kennington being on the bottom of the racetrack had to tiptoe a little bit. We know DJ's not one to damage the body on that number 17. No, but DJ is confident enough around this third of a mile Flamborough Speedway. He has a win in the late model already in 2020 on this very surface. So he knows what is going to happen with the track in a long distance run. Just like the last race, we've got Donald Teach in the most peculiar sounding onboard we've, I think we've ever had. You can see a look back to the 80. Have a listen. It's sounded normal before, but it's a little bit like a, a mini stock engine. It's going well in the White Motorsports number 80. Donald Teach tucked in behind the Kubota number three. Off Jason Hathaway currently sitting in fourth spot. J.R. Fitzpatrick rounds out the top five. One driver who is not faring well in the early stages. Brett Taylor started in the third spot. He is sliding backwards. He's back to eighth if Alice Tagliani can complete this pass. The Rona Viagra, number 18 of Tagliani, does exactly that. Little nudge from Taylor in the 33. As they continue on, nose to tail, you see the driver just ahead, the WeatherTech, number 47 of LP Dumoulin. As we mentioned off the top of the show, the only driver not named Jason Hathaway to win in 2020. Rounding out the top 10, we've got Connor James, we just saw in the eight, Kenny fourth in the 28. Dexter Stacy is 11th, a little bit off the pace, but we do need to acknowledge they've made some solid gains on that 92 machine. Yeah, they really have Dexter Stacy out of the cockpit for several years, became a new dad, as we've mentioned uh, in the past, back behind the wheel of that 92 out of the EHR shop, so it is a good race car. They just needed time to sort of gel as a team, and they're starting to do that. Looking back on Donald Teague from the number three of Jason Hathaway, that's a great view here at this racetrack as these drivers are just putting in laps. J.R. Fitzpatrick was very, very loose in our last race here at Flamborough, so I know the team made some adjustments. The car seems to be fairly settled down for him. I, I imagine he's just putting in time. The race leader continues to be Kevin Lacroix, about a half second gap on second place dj kennington this is a battle for eighth spot as connor james has caught up to the back end of the number 33 of brett taylor and that's a race winning car that connor james is driving donald chisholm was behind the wheel of that machine when he won at riverside down in nova scotia yeah, it's now being operated out of the EHR shop once again, the SSG Gloves number eight. Uh, Connor James with a podium finish. 
And that race win happened way back in 2014, Adam. I remember that race. The crowd loved it. Hometown driver beating the Canada's best stock car racers in, in their backyard. Connor James putting it to good use. He's putting that front bumper to good use on the back end of the TCB trailers. Number 33, the Chevrolet piloted by the only Westerner in today's race, Brett Taylor out of Calgary, Alberta. You can see Taylor struggling in the center of the corner. He drives in about the same as Connor James, but right in the middle when he want to get back to the throttle, and hopefully we see that here. He's got to hesitate. There's no hesitation with Connor James. Turns to the inside, gets a nose up to the driver's door of Brett Taylor. He should be able to complete this pass. And there's what Taylor needed to do. He just let the faster car go around. The eight just snuck on through, and then he closed the door back down so as not to lose too many more spots because Kenny Forth was coming. He was closing that gap. Yeah, Kenny Forth is right on his tail at this point as we see Connor James already a car length or two out in front of Brett Taylor. He'll try to set his sights on Alex Tagliani. Point nine. DJ Kennington, who was very unhappy with the performance of the Castro Lanch number 17 Dodge, uh, picked a new car to come race here at Flamborough, and this one seems to be doing much better. As DJ finished fifth in race number one, sitting comfortably in second right now. Outside, 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 17, outside. So we're listening outside. to Tim Fox from the Dave Jacobs team. He spotted for Larry. Jackson today. We're going to see Dave Jacobs' team back when we head to Jacasa. He's got Cole Powell lined up to drive his car. And that's pretty exciting. Cole Powell, a former race winner in the NASCAR Pinty Series, has only been doing select starts over the past couple of years, but it'll be exciting to see him on a track like Jucasa for the final two events. I wish I could understand what it is Sylvain Lacroix says to Kevin Lacroix. He doesn't talk a lot to his son while he's driving, but when he does, he's giving him what Kevin wants at the time. He's not his spotter, but he feeds him information. Jason Hathaway started on pole in race number three here at Flamborough. We mentioned a dominating performance. He was out in front by a mile for much of that race, but you can hear that car is not hooking up quite as well in this race number four. A little bit of wheel slip as he tries to get to the power. A vastly different line between Kennington and Hathaway, and now we look at J.R. Fitzpatrick. Oh, trouble. Stay on the track. Get the caution. Get the caution. That's the going in the pits, guys. He's got the pit. Something broke. Yeah, the rerun. So Donald Teague, an experienced race car driver, he broke the rear end gears in the car. You could hear the spotter wanting a yellow. Well, that might have been the squeal that we heard. That could have been the rear end and not the engine as it was under power. So a possibility there. You, you could be right. And Donald Teach knew that wh whatever the problem yeah. is, his terminal, bringing out a yellow is not going to help his day because they can't fix this and get him back on the racetrack. No, it doesn't appear to be any fluid down on the track as well. As we stay under green with 28 laps in the books of a scheduled 125, the field still chasing the bumper-to-bumper -bumper dodge of Kevin Lacroix. Lacroix puts Dexter Stacy a lap down in the number 92. We'll be back with more NASCAR racing from Flamborough Speedway. The track has been in operation since 1962, but the NASCAR Pinty Series making a stop at Flamborough Speedway for just the second time in history. And it's Kevin Lacroix, the man from St. Eustache, Quebec, in the bumper to bumper number 74, who has a commanding lead. Dave, I've been coming to Flamborough Speedway since I was a kid. I've raced on it, I've announced at it, I've watched races from everywhere you can imagine. I never realized how much different turns one and two were from turns three and four until you look at it from the drone shot. It does make for some exciting racing as we have a battle heating up for second spot. The 17 of DJ Kennington has it, and the three of Jason Hathaway wants it. Having a good run in this one. A driver who I expected to have a great run is on the sidelines with Todd. Donald Teach is out of the 80 car. A tough day for White Motorsports, Inc. Showed plenty of speed, but what happened? What's the problem, Donald? Yeah, you know, we changed a lot of things between uh, the break uh, to get a good car. Uh, at the beginning, the car wasn't fast. 
So we changed a lot of things, and uh, for the second race, the car was good, very good, believe me. But uh, with, before the, uh, the, the rear end broke, I was smelling, uh, you know, bad oil in the car. So uh, I heard it and, it, and it broke suddenly. So bad, bad thing and again, not lucky. And one of these days, Donald Teach will get good luck at a racetrack. He has been plagued by bad luck throughout his career. He has changed race teams, car numbers. <laughs> like, he has changed pretty much everything you can change, but the bad luck still follows Donald Teach. This again, the battle for second spot. Hathaway chasing the number 17 of DJ Cannington. Everybody in the field chasing that red streak, though. Kevin Lacroix, who is out in front and opening that gap just a little bit. Well, it looked to me as though Hathaway was closing in on DJ Kennington at one point. I thought he was going to make a move. Now he's kind of dropped back at six, eight car lengths. Well, again, we're only 35 laps into this 125-lap affair, so there is some element of saving your equipment for potentially a sprint run to the end. There is that, but these two drivers have a special kind of rivalry. Hathaway and Kennington don't like following each other. And, and it's gone back for many, many years. But when it's personal, it changes you. Let's take a look through the field. There is your race leader, Kevin Lacroix. Started in second spot, comfortably out in front as he comfortably works the wheel in his home studio. Very quiet hands on the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. And that's the sign of a good handling race car and a good race car driver. Driver who started on pole here today is DJ Kennington in the Castrol Edge Dodge and the 17 currently running second. You really find with this on board and that angle, the track shows you where the groove is as we get farther and farther into the race. And it's much narrower when you're in the car than what you look at from the other camera view. There's another view back to Jason Hathaway who sits in third position after starting fourth here today. He's the one chasing DJ Kennington as you see him at work. And his hand's a little busier than Kevin Lacroix. He's been the driver to beat this year. One driver we're expecting big things from here this afternoon, J.R. Fitzpatrick. He's running in the fourth spot in that party casino dot fun number 24. And, and one thing I've found with him all day long, his line is beautiful. The line he runs around this racetrack, he has a lot of laps here. LP Dumoulin started fifth, is currently fifth in the WeatherTech.ca, number 47, having a quietly good run and having a quietly good 2020, except for the mechanical failure in race number two at Sunset. Yeah, that was disappointing, a blown engine for LP Dumoulin in that race. Now we're gonna have a look at a couple of cars. Connor James in the eight as we ride on board with Brett Taylor. And Taylor giving some bumper as they battle for seventh. Remember we talked earlier, Connor James was pushing Taylor through the corners. Yeah, that 33 car has really come alive as more laps get put on this racetrack. The car seems to be working. You can see how much tighter he's able to keep it down in the turns. And where he was lacking before was right in the center in the transition. That's exactly where he's good now, able to hug the bottom of the turn, get back to the throttle. So a good drive for Brad Taylor as he looks to the inside. Oh, he took a peek there. Now, if you get too close to that yellow line, you get onto the flat part of the corner, and you really don't want to be there, do you? No, it really unloads the car and makes it hard almost undrivably loose coming off. Again, a little bit of a push to Connor James in that SSG number eight by Brett Taylor. You can see there is red on the nose of the predominantly white number 33 of Brett Taylor as they come up on lap traffic. The 92 of Dexter Stacy will give these two drivers the inside lane. And this is where Connor James being a veteran stock car racer didn't want to give up the inside to Brett Taylor because he knew they were closing in on Dexter. So if he was stuck on the outside, he could have got freight trained by Taylor and by Kenny Forth. Now, you have to remember, too, all three of those cars are run out of the same shop. They're all prepared by uh, EHR. So there might have been some communication between the spotters there. I doubt it. <laughs> They're just out there giving it. <laughs> They're spotters. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Could, Could you, you just mind? move up? No, I won't. <laughs> but they have to get on their horse because here comes Lacroix. He is putting in fast lap after fast lap, and he will be on the back bumper. These three cars, who are all still on the lead lap very shortly. I can't remember ever getting to lap 50 of any race 
this quickly before the laps are really clicking off in a hurry. Well, you can see the average lap speed, 75 miles an hour for Alex Tagliani, 73-74 for the rest of the, or not Alex Tagliani, I should say, Kevin Lacroix, 73-74 for the rest of them. And remember, that's an average speed, not a top speed. Yeah. That takes into account slowing down to go through the corner, so they're probably upwards of 100 miles an hour on the straightaway and slowing maybe to 50 miles an hour in the turns. There you see, finally, the pass has been made. Seventh spot for Brett Taylor now in the TCB Trailers. Number 33, the number eight of Connor James slots in behind. And again, this gap has closed between Kennington and Hathaway, a battle for second. They'll continue to duke it out, and we'll be back to show you more NASCAR racing on TSN. More than 40 years ago, Ken Bonham wanted to make something for his son, Steve, and Steve's favorite race car driver was Junior Hanley. So they built this go-kart that was a replica of Junior's late model. Junior Hanley welded components onto that, that go-kart, and it sat in a barn. They, they used it, but it had sat in storage for upwards of 40 years, Dave. It's amazing the way it looks now. A lot of hard work went into restoring it, getting it running again, and it's on display here today. Cool story. Cannington sails it down the bottom of Dexter Stacy. Still got Jason Hathaway breathing down his neck. And we should mention, too, Flamborough Speedway is unique because it does have a go-kart track built into the infield here. Hosts races in the mornings on the go-kart track in the evenings here on the Oval. Yeah, the weekends are a busy place here. But a lot of drivers, you know, most drivers who run stock cars these days Go-karts was the logical place to start. It's gotten to a point now where iRacing is a place where a lot of them start, but I'd still say that go-karts are the place parents take their, their kids when they want to get them into the sport. That's one of the purest forms of motorsport indeed, as Kevin Lacroix works around the outside of the 28 off Kenny Forth, putting the 28 one lap down, and Lacroix continues to put on a dominating performance here in the Party Casino 125. He's turning fast laps, and, and the fall off, really, DJ Kennington almost two seconds back, but he's been about two seconds back for probably 30, 40 laps. Yeah. Lacroix jumped out to that lead, and it's kind of held itself where it is. Here goes Hathaway looking for the second spot. And if there wasn't contact made, it was very close as Hathaway pokes the nose underneath once again, and again, Kennington will slam the door in the number 17. I was over by the Kennington number 17 as they were making adjustments earlier, and they actually took a big chunk of ballast weight off the left rear of the car, replaced it with less weight, and put the ballast elsewhere. So I think he was trying to loosen the race car up by doing that. Kennington and how long he has to wait before applying full throttle here at the track, especially when you're working around lap traffic. It may not be fully in the line, and you just have to be very, very patient. 62 green flag laps will make those general tires start to scream for mercy, Dave. Battle for eighth position between the eight of Connor James and the 28 off Kenny Fourth. You can see the race leader just ahead of Connor James. So James, the first car, one lap down. Stay with it here. And that's Jeff Gutler in the three camp, the spotter for Jason Hathaway. As we hit the halfway mark, he's encouraging his driver to stay with it, like you have to tell Jason Hathaway to dig harder on DJ Kennington. No, nah, but having a cheerleader in your ears isn't the worst thing, Dave. Oh, a big wiggle out of the 17. Kennington starting to pick up the pace in that 17, or at least try to. It wasn't handling too well. The 28 car is a DJ Kennington car. Kenny Ford gets down out of the way, allows Kennington and Jason Hathaway to go by without incident. Yeah, and you can see Kennington is moving up into the upper groove now as Hathaway continues to work down low. So
Russell Kennington using the line once again of old teammate Andrew Ranger took him to a championship. He's out in that outside groove and able to carry the momentum down the straightaway, but for how much longer? Flamborough Speedway is a traditional yeah, all by himself here, clear by a straightaway out back. Spotters telling them this is the only battle they need to worry about because there's no threat from behind them for a full straightaway. Out front, they can see where Kevin Lacroix is. And Jason Hathaway picks up that second spot. Okay, Hathaway gets that car almost down to the yellow line in the turns. Getting onto the flat, you can see it unloads the race car, but it doesn't seem to affect him. He's able to get back to the gas and head out. Now he's in second spot. Yeah, I can't quite do the math on that. It's, it's a strange line here as he gets right down on the apron of the track, drives up the banking, the car catches him before he gets up into the wall, but he makes good speed. Now, you talked a little while ago about the differences in the corners here at Flamborough Speedway. You've driven here. Tell us how difficult is it to go quick? You've got to be smooth. The answer to Flamborough Speedway is to be smooth. And if you run the racing line, you've got to get up the banking coming off the corner to get that forward drive. Turn two seems to me to be wider. It's more sweeping off the turn. Turn four, the wall comes up at you faster than it does at any other point on the track, Dave. Kevin Lacroix has got it very much figured out. Nearly a three and a half second lead with 72 laps currently down out of a scheduled 125 here in the Party Casino, 125. What's been fun to me as we look at J.R. Fitzpatrick running in the fourth spot is even though Kevin Lacroix has driven away, there's been battles somewhere on the racetrack for this entire event. Right now, it happens to be Connor James and Kenny Forrest really waging a war for that eighth spot. And that's important because you want to be the first car one lap down because in the event of a caution, you may get the free pass and be put back on the lead lap. So Kevin Lacroix continues to pace the field as he has done since the drop of the green. We'll be back with more from Flamborough Speedway. There are a lot of things in this world that are fake. Your food shouldn't be one of them. Pinty's Man Cave Sausages and Street Dogs. Authentic food for real people. Crave the cave, friends. Pinty's Man Cave. Welcome back to round four of six of the Pinty's Fan Cave Challenge for the NASCAR Pinty Series. We're at Flamborough Speedway for the Party Casino 125. And you can see the field getting spread out around this third of a mile oval with Kevin Lacroix well out in front at this point. With a long green flag run like we've had quite often, what drivers will do, they'll find a pocket, Dave. They'll find somewhere where they're not really having to deal with anyone else in turn laps. The challenge is, once you get to lap 80 of a 125 lap race without a yellow, you start to worry you're not gonna get a yellow. It's time to go. Yeah, absolutely. You can't really be patient anymore at this time. Jason Hathaway, your points leader coming into this event, started in fourth spot he's in second here's a look at your third place runner dj kennington the car just in front of him is dexter stacy and the bullies truck stop number 92 is several laps down but this driver the 24 jr fitzpatrick is coming he started in eighth and he's currently in fourth the big mover and shaker so far today I don't think J.R. Fitzpatrick really thinks in terms of podium finishes. He wants to win, but being interviewed at the end of this race, if he can get into the top three, I think he'd be pretty proud of that achievement today. It was in the top three for race number three, as you can see, L.P. Dumoulin, who's currently in fifth. He got a little bit tied up with the back marker, Kenny Forth, who's a lap down in the 28th, fourth ducks to the inside, allows the 47 to go around up, upstairs. But we talked about the 24, who was in a podium position, unfortunately made contact with the 33 and ended up looking the wrong way on the racetrack. Alex Tagliani runs in the sixth spot. Just ahead of him is the lap car of Kenny Ford with L.P. Dumoulin one spot ahead. Back to seventh, we've got Brett Taylor podium finish in the first event at Flamborough Speedway. The car not quite doing what Brett wants it to do here in this second run. Has come alive just a little bit. You can see the nose damage on the 33. That is from working over the eight of Connor James for several laps. But again, back to your race leader in the bumper to bumper, choke towel number 74. The nose diving into the racetrack under braking. Don Thompson Jr., the crew chief for this team. He knows this facility. He's been here many times, and he has this car dialed in 
perfectly for race this race, race four. A good enough golfer could probably hit a driver from the track to Don Thompson's shop. I couldn't, but somebody <laughs> might be able to. He's pretty close to Flamborough Speedway. So he's looking forward to the drive home tonight. Not much of a commute for Donnie Thompson. J.R. Fitzpatrick is doing all of his driving right now as Dexter Stacy down pit lane in the 92. The motor is still fired, but it looks like his afternoon will come to a close. J.R. Fitzpatrick stalking the number 17 of DJ Kennington. He comes into turn number one a little high on the racetrack, trying to get the nose underneath coming off. Let's ride on board. open on the inside the 98 that was the spotter saying that Larry Jackson slow on the inside and that will draw a caution here on lap 91 so the first caution here in the party casino 125 Back comes out late in this one pit. no I don't know what happened here they plug wire burned off or something or uh, ignition wire burned off quick diagnosis from veteran Larry Jackson he knows that his day is finished early Another driver whose day finished early is with Todd. Dexter, I know you've been chasing the handling of this car all day. You're, you're smiling, but it's a frustrating day here to have you out early. Uh, not just this weekend. We, had, we fought two weeks ago, too, and we're still fighting with the car, hopefully to make it better one of these races. But it looks like it was something that broke in the rear end, and that's what the problem yeah, was. Yeah, we're pretty sure the Panda Bar bracket broke in the rear. It happened the last race, and it happened again this race. So, Tough luck. Thanks, Dexter. Awesome. Thank you. Let's listen to a little strategy between crew chief and driver. How's the car, Kevin? Uh, it's getting a little bit over there, Miss Corner exit. And... Yeah. Hard to believe he didn't say perfect to Don Thompson Jr., his crew chief, because he has been perfect so far today. We'll be back with more. The field under caution for just the first time here in the Party Casino 125 on TSN. I'm Dave Bradley. Along with me in the booth is Adam Ross. Todd Lewis is trackside patrolling the pits for us here today. It's been a long green flag run. Some drivers have dropped out. There is Larry Jackson, the cause of this caution. The uh, car just losing steam through that green flag run. And he doesn't take much of a break. He wants to see what's going on under the hood of that Dark Horse Trailers by Jim Bray Machine. And that's the thing about Larry Jackson is you mentioned that he's a veteran of the series. He works on these cars as much as he drives them. Some of the reason Larry Jackson gets to drive these cars is because he works on people's cars so much when they have a spare car. Larry, you want to race this weekend? So the field lines up two by two behind the Dodge Ram 2500 pace truck, the Motor Trend Truck of the Year for 2020. It'll pull to the inside and head towards the infield as we'll head back to green. Here in the Party Casino 125, it is Kevin Lacroix and Jason Hathaway. Lacroix will use the outside to get the lead off the initial start. This time, he'll hold the inside lane. He has a great start. He'll take the lead, keep the lead from Jason Hathaway. Hathaway into second as J.R. Fitzpatrick door to door with D.J. Kennington. A little bit of contact in the battle for third. Yeah, let's call that bumper to door as D.J. Kennington leaned on his good friend J.R. Fitzpatrick a little bit through three and four. Fitzpatrick gathered it back up, but they are glued together. Fitzpatrick clears the number 17, put J.R. Fitzpatrick up into the third spot. Did you see, though, the battle for the lead is heating up as Jason Hathaway, the winner in race two, the winner in race three, and looking to be the winner here in race number four is taking a look on your race leader. Well, Kevin Lacroix did not want to see a yellow flag in this race. He had built such a big lead. Jason Hathaway, though, this is exactly what this driver needed. 
The top three all single file now as two very different lines from these top two drivers as each looking to gain an advantage on the other. The 74 of LaCroix gets a bump from Hathaway on the exit of turn two. Bit of a tap, he's keeping the driver occupied. Almost looked like smoke out of the 74 that time when he got on the brakes. You almost want to do that too, just to stay in the driver's head in front of you, just to remind them that you're still there. Well, J.R. Fitzpatrick in the third spot is closing in as well. And when it comes to patience, he doesn't have any. Nor does he have to worry about anything. He's not in the points race. He just wants a win. And I shouldn't say that because J.R. Fitzpatrick is a gifted race car driver. But today, it's just about taking a win if it's there for the taking. And there you can see the gap from the top three back to fourth place, D.J. Kennington as the top three start to stretch out just a little bit. And they are nose to tail. Kevin Lacroix with a good exit that time off of turn two. Picks up about a car length on the three of Jason Hathaway. And after such a long green flag run through the first portion of this race, you have a caution. Those general tires cool down a little bit. How much different are these cars going to react at this point? Well, you, you never know when they cool off a little bit, but as you come back up in temperature, they're going to remember where they were before, right? If your car was handling great before, chances are you're still going to be decent. But anything can happen. You start rubbing with another driver like Fitzpatrick and Kennington did. That's when you might cut a tire, and the leak can be so slow that you don't realize it until it's over. Saw a quick look from the onboard of the 18 of Alex Tagliani driving Cowboy. Every vehicle out of the 22 racing shop has a nickname. The 24 of J.R. Fitzpatrick is Springsteen. The 18 of Alex Tagliani is Cowboy. It's written right on the dash. Gives them a little bit of personality, I suppose. Well, allows the driver to bond with their race car, too, right? We look at LP Dumoulin in the WeatherTech 47. He's got a couple of car lengths on Tagliani. Tagliani himself has a couple of car lengths. So really, these positions aren't, they're not being contested right now. But this is where the drivers know we're getting down to 15 laps to go. It's time to boogie. And Brett Taylor is closing in on the 18. Taylor, who has two podiums so far in 2020, finished third in the first race here at Flamborough Speedway. But he'll have a lot of work to do to catch these three. This is your current podium as it sits right now. Kevin Lacroix, Jason Hathaway, and J.R. Fitzpatrick. But I'm not going to say it's going to end this way because if Sunset Speedway taught us anything is that last laps do matter a lot. Anything can happen. You know, it's never over until the checkered flag falls. J.R. Fitzpatrick is up on the wheel. Jason Hathaway looks to be as relaxed as you could possibly be, but he's up on the wheel trying to get all the speed he can out of that Kubota number three. He was a lot closer to the 74 just a few laps ago. Lacroix has been able to open up a couple car length gap now. Just a little bit more comfortability in the 74 as compared to the three. Brad Taylor inching ever closer to Alex Tagliani in the 18, right up on the back bumper of that Rona Viagra sponsored Camaro. Chevrolets, so we ride on board with Brett Taylor. That is the best battle on the racetrack right now, the closest battle. And as Tagliani has to be looking at his mirror and Brett Taylor coming, he is also closing in on LP Dumoulin. So this is a three-car battle for position, the yeah. fifth spot. I was going to say, and you rely on your spotter a lot at this point because you have to know when the driver behind you is making a move, so you don't make a move to go with it. laps to go or under 10 laps now nine to go as you can see a little bit of hard wear on the uh, right side of the Viagra Rona number 18 of Alex Tagliani a little bit of rubbing drives it deep into the corner right up under the rear bumper of LP Dublin no contact just yet goes high into turn one he'll try to cut across the racetrack and down the banking we should mention that Kevin Lacroix continues to lead the field over Jason Hathaway and J.R. Fitzpatrick but this battle for fifth is definitely one to watch. 
Yeah, Tagliani using every bit of racetrack. He's tried a different entry into turn one the last three laps, and LP Dumoulin got really loose under throttle there off of two. He's using every bit of the racetrack as a man to Larry Jackson four. back out on track. And you can hear the lap times being called out for Kevin Lacroix. His time comparatively to the three of Hathaway. Five laps to go. Point three, point three. Five laps to go. Kevin Lacroix is hitting his marks. Nose down on the race car, right around the seam at the bottom of the track. He has put on a clinic here in this event. And point three, point three means you're doing the exact same lap time as the driver who's chasing you. So that's all you have to do to maintain that distance between Kevin Lacroix and Jason Hathaway. They are one, two with a little gap between them. And they've opened up a bit of space onto third place. The party casino dot fun number 24 of J.R. Fitzpatrick. DJ Kennington in the 17 is just ahead of this tornado of action. The battle for fifth spot. LP Dumoulin continues to run in that fifth position with Alex Tagliani. Man, oh man, he's got close enough to almost touch the 47, but I don't think he has yet, Dave. There you see the gap down the back straight away as the driver in the lead. Kevin Lacroix will see the white flag this time by one more lap. A third of a mile here at Flamborough Speedway as Kevin Lacroix looks for his very first win here in 2020. He'll set it down through three and four for the final time. And a winner in the NASCAR Pinty Series in 2020, Kevin Lacroix. Good job, buddy. Good job. The team did an awesome job. Good cars. All day long. Good cars. Good team. Good job, Kevin. Kevin Lacroix getting congratulations all around. His 13th career NASCAR Pinty Series victory here in the Party Casino 125 at Flamborough Speedway. In a dominating drive, started outside of the pole and drove away to the win. Stops on the front straightaway for Dan Hawkins to come down, deliver the checkered flag. Window neck comes down, checkered flag in hand. He knows the drill. It's an old school kind of track, so you get to do an old school victory lap with a checkered flag hanging out the window. And that's what Kevin Lacroix will do. Hawk, they're giving directions to Kevin Lacroix how to get to victory lane. He's been there before. He knows the way. When we return, we'll talk to Kevin Lacroix as he parks in victory lane. And Adam, we talked about this place being a tough track to pass on, but Kevin Lacroix really didn't have to worry about that too much today. No, he sure didn't. There was a time he was a road course racer, unbeatable, but the ovals were his kryptonite. He's got the oval tracks figured out too, and he's dangerous. He's been knocking on the door this season, and Kevin Lacroix finally kicked it down here at Flamborough Speedway to score the first win of the season. Big hit of confetti. Kevin, you have been really fast this season. You've demonstrated the speed and you really brought it home today in this event. You were dominant in race number four. Yeah, the car is just uh, so good every race. Uh, had a shot at the wind at sunset, uh, then uh, crashed in the last corner, finished third, uh, second race, and then second and first today. So just getting better and better every time. and. Uh, very happy of the team. Uh, they, do, they do a great job every week, uh, bumper to bumper in total. The car is perfect, and uh, uh, we're, we're having a shot at the, at the win every race, and that's, uh, that's really cool. Really says something about this team, how strong you are, how prepared you are. Even though there was a delay to start this season, your team used that time wisely, and you've been really strong ever since. Yeah, we never stopped working uh, on the car, and we just built a, a new car, and uh, that uh, COVID situation just gave us a little bit more time to uh, make it better and uh, prepare it for the, uh, for the season, and uh, now it pays off. Kevin Lacroix, the winner here at Flamborough Speedway. Now we'll take a look at the Leland final results. And of course, Kevin Lacroix on top. There you see DJ Kennington coming home fourth, LP Dumoulin. 
outlasted Alex Tagliani for fifth. A fought off tag and Brett Taylor. Connor James coming home with a solid eighth place finish. Disappointment for Dexter Stacy and Donald Teach. And, and Donald Teach may leave here the biggest disappointed driver in the paddock because he was so fast in practice and was looking for a big day. Unfortunately, uh, burnt up rear end gear ends it early. Let's go down to your second place finisher. Jason Hathaway with another strong run here at Flamborough Speedway, but the winning streak is over. You'll take second place, though. That's pretty good. Yeah, I'll take the second place. Uh, Kevin and I got racing after the restart there. It was pretty good. So I think I was a little better in the bottom and, and uh, just got underneath him a few times there, but he kind of pulled away once he could run his line. So, yeah, he had a good car, and uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. We'll take first and second and pretty good points and we'll move on. The strong runs continue for Jason Hathaway. Well, he's not kidding about being okay in the points. Let's have a look. An eight-point advantage he is going to have before we round out the series with two events at Jucasa Motor Speedway. Yeah, and DJ Cannington, 17 points back in the WeatherTech point standings as well. Let's go down, Todd's with your third-place finisher. Todd? J.R. Fitzpatrick back in the NASCAR Pinty Series with a third-place finish here at Flamborough. That's a pretty impressive run for a driver that spent six years on the sidelines. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was a lot of fun. I mean, we tested here in the car. It was great. We had a few little issues that set us back in the first race there, handling-wise. Uh, the team found it in the second race, so that's great. Uh, got spun out in the first one there, but it's one of them deals. You know, people can get away with it once, but not twice. So we're, uh, I'm excited, you know, to go to Jacasa now with good momentum. Uh, we got a good feel for each other with the car, and Thanks to Party Casino. Dot fun for coming on this weekend. Uh, I had a lot of fun and looking forward to the next one. See you there. That really is a more mature J.R. Fitzpatrick, a different driver. You can always tell what he what he's thinking because he'll always tell you what's on his mind. I think he did have fun today. Yeah, for sure. And there's a smile underneath that mask as well. Kevin Lacroix, the winner. Today's race from Lambro Speedway has been brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs, Born to Burn by Dark Horse Trailers, by Jim Bray, by Kubota, for Earth, for life, there's a Kubota for every job. And by Quickwick, the world's best fire starters. Go to quickwick.com for your NASCAR discount code. Two races here at Flamborough Speedway were a lot of fun, Dave, but we're going to head to Jucasa Motor Speedway, Canada's crown jewel, to close off the Fan Cave Challenge. Yeah, it was fun to get on this tight third of a mile oval for the first time in the NASCAR Pinty Series, but going back to Jucasa will be equally fun. Two very different places, and they'll be very different races as well. We'll cap off the Pinty's Fan Cave Challenge from the crown jewel at Jucasa with the Motomaster 125. Next up, that'll be race number five in the six race series here in 2020. I think the drivers and the crews really need to be commended at how well they drove on a challenging racetrack. The series has never visited. We didn't see much carnage, but we saw a lot of great racing. For director Steve Ryan, for Adam Ross, and Todd Lewis, I'm Dave Bradley. We'll see you at Jacasa. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.